Hello, I'm Charlene White. We start tonight with an exclusive interview with one of Britain's most successful Olympians and recently knighted, Sir Mo Farah. He's spoken for the first time about why he stood up to Donald Trump after the president's travel ban. Sir Mo's tweets made headlines around the world last month. It said, the Queen made me a knight, Donald Trump made me an alien. Well, tonight he's explained to us why he felt it was important to speak up on what he says was an unfair ban. He spoke to our sports reporter, Amy Lewis. Smiling through what has been an uncertain few weeks, Samo Farah knows what it's like to unpick the confusion of a President Trump travel ban. At first, the Somalian-born athlete who lives in the United States thought the executive order applied to him. At the time, he was training in Ethiopia and didn't know if he could return to his wife and children in Oregon. Recently, you've been speaking pretty strongly about, about Donald Trump and his travel ban. How do you feel about going back to the United States? Yeah, no, it was important that I speak up and at the time it did affect me and it was one of the speaking to my kids and not being able to see my kids and, and with that. It affected me, so it was important that I, 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 I speak up and say what was right. And I, I believe that it was an unfair decision to, to suddenly to be able to, in a country, you've been there for six years and done everything right overnight to tell you you can't come back to your kids is unfair. In your tweet, the thing that really struck me was the fact that you were talking about the fact that obviously you've been knighted here and yet you felt that you weren't being treated very well from the United States. Is it different the way that you feel that you are treated by different countries? Yeah, it is, and sometimes it's not fair, but it's what it is, and, and for me, strongly, that's what I put out there, is something wasn't right, it wasn't fair. It's not, it wasn't, you know, it, it was unfair to be, to be able to be treated that way, and that's why I strongly put that statement. We are on your athletics track. How special an occasion is this? It's a very special day. Um, this is where I used to train. This is where it all started. I went to uni here um, and today get the name after me. So, Just tell us a little bit about this track and how it's helped your career. No, I went to St Mary's, uh, St Mary's University here. This is where it all started. Uh, this is where I used to run around this track and this is the most memory I have of a track where, you know, we come out here. We do sessions and you go back to the halls and you use the gym and the facilities and this was a uni life. And you still come back here and train occasionally? Yeah, this is it. When I'm in the summer, uh, whenever I'm in uh, London, I normally come out to this track and train and, and still use the facility. You're going to be retiring from the track this summer after the World Athletics Championships in London. Obviously, it's going to be at the Olympic Stadium where you won your first two Olympic golds. How are you feeling about retirement and about the need to go out on a high? No, it's really important to end on a high. Um, obviously, I'd love to be able to do the double again. Uh, that's my aim. And, but, you know, it's still got quite a long time away, so I just have to take one race at a time. Um, you know, just, just keep enjoying training and try not to think about it too much. Once you have ended on the track, what are you planning on doing with the rest of your time? I want to go to the roads. I feel like I, quite, I haven't quite achieved what I wanted to achieve on the roads. Um, I have to learn about the events, understand about the event, and, and you know, run a few marathons to, to run a one good marathon. Will you be running in the London Marathon? It just depends. Um, my having decided which marathon I'm going to do it, but obviously I just have to get the World Championship out of the way. Once I get that out of the way, and then I'll run a marathon. I'm not sure which one yet. With regards to the London Marathon, what makes that particular marathon special, do you think? The crowd, the people, the home. Um, London Marathon is one of the biggest marathons in the world and to do it, to run in your home crowd, it can't get any better now. And I had great experience running in 2014. Yeah, it's not quite what I wanted in terms of results, but it was great atmosphere. You've talked a bit about the fact that you're going to be doing marathons in retirement, but can you see yourself moving back to London? Of course, yeah. No, I miss London. This is home for me and I, I do generally enjoy it. Um, when the time is right, I will, I will be back. What part of London? West London. West London. Since we saw you last, you've been knighted. Congratulations. How is it being called, sir? It's amazing. Uh, it's something, you know, I never dream of as an athlete, as a youngster, um, you know. Never dream of being called Sir. I remember watching Match of the Day and seeing so many guys. Alex Ferguson was one of them, and Sir Alex Ferguson, and then now myself. And uh, it's just incredible. Uh, it's something I never dream of. And um, do you make your family and friend, uh, friends call you Sir? 
No, not at all, not at all. <laughs> um, yeah, no. It was quite strange. Quite it was strange. weird, like, being able to eat at St Mary's and seeing so many faces that I've seen over the years and know me and to say, sir, it's like, don't have to call me sir. And just finally, I don't know if you saw the Arsenal game last night, but <laughs> from your reaction, it looks like you might have done. I did, I was actually travelling from Ethiopia last night, watch, watching it on, uh, at the lounge and it wasn't good for us. What do you think of Arsenal's season? Um, it's, it's hard, it's just, it happened too quick. Um, it is hard, yeah, it is hard. Do you think it's time for Wenger to go or would you like to see him stay there for a bit longer? I'd like to see him at the top and, and see what he could do and maybe get in a few key players. And um, I, I love Arsenal and I love what he does. And sometimes as an athlete like myself, one race doesn't change you as who you are, as, as you, but it changes the result. And, and, and same thing in matches. A match like that can affect immediately. But in the long term, you have to look up at long term and, and, and see what it does. There's Amy talking to Samo Farah. Well, she's still at the Samo Farah track for us tonight. And uh, Amy, you last spoke to Mo back in Rio. Has his demeanour changed at all between then and now? Well, a lot has changed in Samo Farah's life between now and then. But no, he seemed pretty relaxed and he also seemed pretty relaxed given the fact that he's just been in Ethiopia doing warm weather training for the last couple of months and it's absolutely freezing here in Twickenham. I did speak to him a bit off camera after the interview and he was talking to me about the fact that he's been away from his family now for a couple of months. He's going to be competing in Birmingham over the weekend and then he's going to be heading back to Ethiopia for another month. And he talked about that in terms of how difficult that can be. And he said everyone sees the honours and the medals, but it's not all glamour. Uh, and of course, he's going to be going back to the United States next month, not really knowing how welcome he is. But one thing he does know is that he has inspired a new generation of athletes here in Twickenham. All right, Amy, thanks very much for that.